Hey, what's up you guys? So I'm coming to you with another video and tonight we're talking about like a Tim Pool and his video with Hunter Avalon a few weeks ago and this idea in which the left has become more authoritative and in this idea in which it was pro like how the left and right kind of switch and whereas the conservatives was like the authoritative back in the 90s and now I kind of switch and I kind of want to get into it and talk about it so let's get into it. But first, of course, if you're new to my channel, what is up? My name is Mitch, Mavic Mitch. Hey Mitch, Mitch, all the Mitches, and pretty much I like talking about what I'm talking about. So, current events, reviews, and pop culture within the scope of entertainment, culture, and purpose. So, TV movie reviews, social bullet commentary. Be sure to check out all those videos as you're finishing this video. So getting into the meat of this video, I, I remember watching this a week ago on Timcast IRL. Tim had Hunter Avalon, a YouTuber, on his on as a guest. And you know, this particular topic popped up as a segment. I wanted to go dive into it and everything. And and again, it was interesting. And it begs why, like, how Hunter Avalon does not understand what's going on. It's kind of funny too, because I watched Hunter Avalon in back in like 2018, 2019, while I was getting into the whole YouTube business, watching all of these conservative YouTubers and everything. And then for Hunter Avalon to backpedal and said that he's centrist, um, people has even mentioned that he's kind of like a beta male, woke, um, SJW now, um, pandering to the left and all that stuff. And then he was saying he's a, like, also people said he's a grifter, but I understand his point, like why would he grift if that means he's losing views and everything. But I think there's an idea in which he, there's, there's, you know, he was pairing conservative talking points but not really understanding them or believing in them. And I understand to a certain degree, but him just having this conversation with Tim Pool goes to show like he, he like his, his knowledge base was really weak. And other people have mentioned this, how like how Tim Pool destroyed Hunter Avalon and everything. And so um, I just want to go into it because I want, I want this use, I want to use this video for anyone who's watching and maybe you can share this video and like at least direct other people because again I get this from the a lot of people of, of my friends even my family you like how there's council culture and then they're like saying council culture is on both sides but I'm like yes but it's on the left that it's more pervasive you know when it comes to council culture it is an inquisition it is what I would call as if the left has an ideology of a, of a non-theist religion Catholic culture is excommunication, you know, like if it was in the Catholic Church. So you're ex you're excommunicated from the rest of society because you believe in all of what you're not supposed to believe. But we can get into it. I, I I'm 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 kind of like ranting about it now. But I, I just want to go into the video and talk some more. So yeah, the the left and the right in this country have uh, have flipped. It's, it, what, what are they calling it? It's the realignment, I guess. Yeah, the flippening or the realignment. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, 10 years ago, uh, for instance, Julian Assange, mm -hmm. biggest hero to the left, right? Now they hate his guts. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of leftists do, however, want him pardoned as well. So it's, it's more like the neo-lib establishment left, who were never really the biggest fans of him for the most part anyway, but... Oh, nobody likes them. Yeah, but they're the, they're the establishment. I think what, what, what really happened is that when Trump got elected, the establishment cronies from the Republican Party went to the Democrats, their next closest alignment. Yeah. But we are seeing an, an interesting alignment where, like, um, I guess you voted, for, uh, is it public who you voted for? Yeah. You voted for Joe Biden. Yeah. See, like, for us, we're, I think, 10 years older than you. That would never happen. That's like, because uh, Bush is essentially a neocon. He's a, he's a warm... So, just one point to, and I think this is why I gravitate towards Tim Pool, because we're re relatively the same age, and so, yeah. Longer, he's, a, you know, a, a, an interventionist. He, as part of, like, the Obama administration prosecuted more journalists and whistleblowers, uh, on, you know, than, than any other. Under the Espionage Act, more than all the other presidencies before him combined. Wow. Yeah, so, so, so the yeah. left has become, like, even, uh, like, the left has become the authoritarians. It used to be that the Republicans, like, when I was growing up, were the moral authoritarians, and the authoritarians, George W. Bush started these wars, and they wanted to ban, like, I, I've got art downstairs where it's from the card game Magic the Gathering. And in the 90s, the right got some card art banned, had to be changed. Today, the, uh, the banned cards I have now came from the left getting art banned. So it's like, you know, the, it's flipped. Again, just to il illustrate that point, I remember growing up, like, it was the right that's saying, like, all the rap music is, like, bad, like, 
um, South Park is bad. Um, all of these things was coming from the quote unquote Christian conservatives on the right. And so they were, they were espousing, they were um, enforcing and uh, injecting their, their, like, their views onto people. Now it's the left that's doing it. Now it's the left that is injecting, that is enforcing, that is like, it, like forcing their views onto pop culture. The, the left is now uh, very much so in support of these uh, intelligence agencies for the most part. They're supporting Joe Biden. He's stacking his cabinet with lobbyists and corporatists and Goldman Sachs. All of the worst corrupt people imaginable. And it's like, that, that's exactly why I voted for Donald Trump. There's a reason why I went down to Occupy Wall Street and I was like, you know, the, the system's broken. And there's a reason why I'm like, Joe Biden's a bad guy. Because Joe Biden was vice president during Occupy Wall Street. When all of these leftists were coming out and complaining, interestingly enough too, you know in 2016, we had the RNC and the DNC, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, uh, the left didn't protest the Republicans? Mm -hmm. Do you know they protested? Yeah. The Democrats. Really? The left showed up in the thousands, tried storming the barricades to break into the DNC. Nobody went to the Republican convention. Trump was down there. I was in, where, where, where was that? Was that, was that Florida? Where? No, no, 2016? That was um, Cleveland. It wasn't Atlanta, was it? No. I don't remember. Charlotte? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Charlotte. There was things. one in Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. Well, Trump was there, and he's like, you know, uh, giving a speech to the Republicans where he says, the you know these people, uh, and you know, uh, he, I think he's talking about the Pulse nightclub shooting. He said, there's a lot of people who have religious differences with this group, but these are Americans. These are our people, and they were attacked. And everyone starts clapping and cheering. Meanwhile, the De Democratic National Convention, Bernie Sanders gets ripped off, and the the left is like trying to knock the barricades down and jump over and storm into the building. Mm -hmm. So the left was protesting. Now the weirdest thing happens is you get like these faux progressive corporate, you know, independent commentators on YouTube and such who are just like, the machine is right. I, you know, my favorite thing is, is how like Rage Against the Machine, the band, is very much rage for the machine now or rage on behalf <laughs> of the machine. They used to say things like, what's the famous line? F you, F I won't, you don't tell me. What, I won't do what you, you tell, tell me. me. Yep. Now they're saying, F you, you better do what we tell you. Yeah. How so? So, uh, like lockdowns, for instance, mm -hmm. the left is very much in favor of the lockdowns and stimulus. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the antithesis of where the left would have been a while ago. Definitely in favor of more socialist policy and stuff, but not letting the government just decree that we're going to bar you from leaving your home, which they're doing and they're cheering for. I think my favorite thing about, like, Joe Biden is when he said, tune in on a shot at a pressure, and the audience was cheering for him. It's like, now that's something remarkable. Shout out to Cassandra Fairbanks for pointing that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like everyone's cheering. What are they cheering for? That's so weird. Or Batacath care. I think, you know, what happened is, I, I think... Uh, tune out on a pressure. Enough, and I mean this with no disrespect. You're 24. Oh, that's fine. You're 24, right? Yeah. You, like, so, like, Luke and I went through Occupy Wall Street. Luke actually questioned Democrats on Barack Obama drone bombing kids and things like that. Mm -hmm and either got lied to or had people say like, yeah, well, he should have had a better father. Who was that? Was that Gibbs? Yep, that's, that's Barack Gibbs. Obama's spokesperson and his right-hand man throughout his entire political career, Robert Gibbs, who I, came out and literally got angry. He's like, he should have had a better father. Damn. Oh, like, I, I, like Obama dropped a bomb on, on a kid in a civilian restaurant. 16-year-old like American citizen. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. I mean, Obama. And Obama was the VP, uh, I'm sorry, Biden was the VP. He was overseeing Iraq. And his brother got a lucrative multi-million dollar contract for construction deals. It's like the, the amount of evidence that has come out against the Bidens, and it's just like completely ignored by the left because either they're just tribalists who don't care, and so they're like, I just want to win. And it's funny because they're the ones saying the cons just want to own the libs. I'm like, dude, you just want to own the cons. That's all you want to do. It's so funny hearing you say this because with my experience, I've, I've, I feel like I've seen the same exact thing happen on the right. Oh, the right just wants, like, like they, well, they want to own the libs. And there are and people who go on Twitter and just... Do you think that the right is, like, heavily ideologically driven? Like, I've seen, I've found that the right tends to already have kind of a set of, like, presuppositions, and then they go out of their way to find uh, support for their already held beliefs, rather than the other way around, which is trying to approach it neutrally and then forming your opinion based That's on... That's both the left and the right. Do you think it's both? It's absolutely. It's yeah. yeah. So like, oh yeah, like, I, and like, I would agree that it's both for sure. That's why I, I mean, that's why I like to. But right now, now right. so so right now, the right has more of the critical thinkers, and it's cancel culture. That's basically why. So you'll see, like, I was down at Occupy Wall Street. wasn't really I didn't agree with a lot of them because they were very just like they're extremely racist people. Like it was some, it was one of the most racist things I've ever experienced at Occupy. 
And, uh, but there were a lot of economic populists there who weren't necessarily in line with the weird racism stuff and there were fights over it. The, the, I think the left has become like predominantly racist relative to where the right is. How so? So uh, Occupy Wall Street, they segregated voting blocks based on race. Well, that, I just can't even speak on that. Since... But would you agree that's racist? To be like, we're going to allow you to vote for how things are run here, but we want all the brown people here, all the black people here, all the Mexicans here, and all the Asians here, and you're all separated based on your color, and you can vote. Only one vote per group, no matter how many of you there are. Wow. Yeah, that's so weird. if you have, like, you think it's fair. No, 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 I said that's weird. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. So that's, that, that, so that's what's, like, what's happening at these universities with, like, critical race theory stuff. So they'd be like, there's 10 white people, three Asian people, and 15 black people. You all get one vote based on your race. So you get three votes, but that makes no sense because there's different numbers of people. That's what Occupy was doing. It's extremely racist. And so that's when I started being like, what is this crazy stuff, man? Anyway, the left has become particularly authoritarian in, in their application of things. Well, how have they become authoritarian? Uh, Besides the are lockdowns. You in, are you, yeah, the lockdowns. Uh, so, so you also have cancel culture, right? But censorship. Supporting massive private corporate corp, uh, corporations. Corporations are, are, are essentially authoritarian structures. Are they? I'm, I'm going to have to ask you more about this. See, I'm such a leftist, and you're such a conservative. No, it's okay. It's just, <laughs> more, how are the leftists supporting um, corporations? Uh, censorship. I mean, I mean it's, Donald it's, Trump it's, gave tax cuts to corporations, right? He gave tax cuts to everybody. It, but substantially more so to the corporations. But what is, what is, what's wrong with that? Uh, well, his, uh, that's actually fairly libertarian. Well, no, the problem with that was that he was going in there hoping that by lowering corporate taxes, we would see more businesses coming back to the U.S., but that's just not what happened. Well, the economy did do ridiculously well in 2019, but that wasn't because of Trump. Why not? What was it because of? It was because it's an economical fact that after a recession, the economy always comes back stronger. After a recession 10 years ago? Yeah. Go ahead, look up the... Uh, go, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying if, if you can't give credit to, uh, to Trump, then you can't blame uh, well, George Bush for, for the recession. You can't blame Obama for the recovery. What did Trump do to, to help with the economy? What did Trump do more specifically even to help with unemployment? Tariffs. Uh, there, were, there were immigration uh, raids on processing plants, which resulted... like it, it's, a, it's a variety of factors, but tariffs, tariffs didn't do... That, that cost American taxpayers hundreds of thousands. All right, so what I'll do is I'll link the rest of the video below. You can check it out and everything. But I think, again, there is some points here that I wanted to allude to. So first one, again, there's like this age thing. You know, like me, myself, I'm not saying that I'm an expert in any of this stuff. But I, I do have a greater understanding of what things were in the past versus what things are now. And I think when it comes to like a person like Hans, Hunter Avalon and everything, I think it goes into... Um, don't hate me for the, using this um, analogy. It's just what I see in my own daily life. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna use this. But um, when when people who are cradle Catholic, who are who who went to Catholic church and who who even went to like Catholic school or whatever, and then leave the faith, right? And they go to whatever denomination, Christian denomination, non-denomination, and all this stuff. And because they had like this view of, oh yeah, I, I, I knew what it was to grow Catholic, and then they didn't know the actual sacraments or whatever, you know, they couldn't defend the faith. So you you get this idea in like, like Hans Avalon, he was grew up in this kind of conservative bubble, and then when people, and then he can he can argue, right, on, on the talking points that he rose up with, with everything, but once he started to question like oh this is that this is that woke and like putting in the emotional uh, like um arguments into it he started to question his stuff and so instead of digging further into conservative talk points and maybe you know what he can he can very well change his mind and that's that's that that is a a factor i guess but it is just like there a lot of the arguments are on emotional base right when you come when you talk about like abortion and stuff that that those are hard questions right i get it i talk to uh, talk to abortion with my my friends who aren't conservative and it is a hard topic but like and then and it's hard because you know you you are going into you you will never know what that a, a woman goes through or whatever and i understand that there's certain points but there is still objective stuff that you that you can't deny like I wouldn't advocate for suicide, but that's their body, their choice. I wouldn't advocate for that. So there, when it comes to like abortion, it is like there's this idea that there's no bad choices, but there is bad choices. If my friend is drunk and they and they have keys in their hand, they're about to drive away. I will 
limit, I will take away their keys, I will like remove their body autonomy because I know that they're making a bad decision, you know, and I'm not saying there was this idea in which abortion in the 90s was safe, legal, and rare, and now it's on demand and everything, and there's an idea just on the pro-life side, I'm like, why are there good choices? Why does a choice have to happen at at abortion? Like, there is many steps in, in which that was not the case, and there's m and many choices, not just abortion. But why why is the left leaning that abortion is the top choice? Why is why is the abortion is the best choice? And then when people say there's no such thing as pro-abortion, but there is. There is there is like Sarah Rolf talking about God bless America, God bless abortions, you know? And you have a li um, uh, Olivia Wilde saying, oh, I thank God I have the ability to have the choice to have an abortion. And you're like, oh, Oscar winners, I forgot their name. They're like, I got this award because I got the ability to choose and have an abortion, you know? Like, there's pro-abortion people out there. So, not just to get into the weeds and everything and not to make this just so pro-life or whatever, but I, there's just this idea in which I'm just I'm just rooting back into the Hunter's Avalon's w way of thinking because he was a conservative talk he was a conservative YouTuber and now he's uh, quote unquote centrist or whatever and now he's more criticizing um, the right you know and I and that's some some of his fair points because like he criticized Caitlyn Bennett um, because he, she on her tactics of you know street interviewing and that it's a lot of aggressive and those the, he has some fair points here and there but and like this interview with Tim Pool like he is ill equipped in which what he was talking about and what like the knowledge base um, of what Tim Pool has you know when Tim Pool like this happened this 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 and then he's like can you elaborate and like it's like okay you 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 definitely don't know the level in which you can talk to and not not to say anything bad about hunter like i'm sure he is definitely very smart it's just that he's not looking at the right places you know like i seen him have conversation with karen Car uh carlin borisenko and there's just i there's just there's just like you're not looking at the right like information you know and so and not to say that i'm an expert but it, it just goes to show like this simple topic about the left being authoritative he doesn't see it, right and that's when it comes down to like when it, when me talking to my friends and all this stuff and like when i say there's council culture and it's pervasive on the left and they're like oh council culture is on both sides and like no i mean it it we, there is council culture growing so much that Car Carolyn Borosenko did a segment on this earlier today. I'll probably link it below. That this one dude in high school had this image uh, had this video of this white girl saying the N word in context as she was singing a song. You can say that was still bad, but he he held onto that video as a freshman only to release it when he was a senior when she when he, it was more prominent to destroy and give more clout to his social media like look I'm counseling this person he could have released that video like early when he was a freshman but he didn't and more so when it comes to counsel culture it's not even this abil ability in which you keep people accountable or there's a learning process he was out to make a name for himself look at the things that I'm doing I'm canceling this person look how righteous virtual signal I am and so there's problems I'm ranting but I think you get the point right um, if you so what I'm trying to get at is that when, when it comes to my my channel and those people who are similar similar that we're in this knowledge base that the left is not you know um not to say that uh there aren't but there is we're just living in two different worlds right now right um especially where, where you get your news and so i'll leave it there um tell me what you think um if you agree what you disagree how how is temple correct how is the left more authoritative than the right in 2020 in the in the 20s 2021 as we're entering a new year and everything and so um and we're still in the decade of the 20s and so yeah the rowing roaring 20s the <laughs> so yeah awesome again if you want to follow me you can follow me my instagram at hey Mitch, Mitch. you can follow my joint instagram it's mandatory it's mandatory fun where i do other videos for my friend jen i'm also on parlor mavic mitch and see you in the next video thanks for watching peace 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 be with you